Can you sense a danger coming from the hot desert rocks? It's not just snakes. Hello, everybody. This time, we will venture to the desert, the Joshua Tree National Park. It's relatively close to Los Angeles and kind of far from San Francisco, but still just one day drive away. The park is considered by many to be a wonderful getaway for people from the coastal megacities, especially during spring break. We visited Joshua Tree a few times already. This visit was a bit different because we had Geiger counter with us to measure radiation levels at various locations throughout the place. We have been carrying it on our trips, but did not really catch any levels to worry about. A few beaches, a fossilized shark tooth, and a dinosaur bone. That was until we got to Joshua Tree and started to see a bit more interesting numbers. So we thought, perhaps, it is worth making a short video about it. We will go on a short walk on the trail Arch Rock near White Taint Campground to show you the gorgeous landscape and do some science on the way. The campground has a small parking lot near the restroom, but it's usually full. Before we visited the place, we did not know that there is another spot for the short-term parking near the trailhead. It's near the campsite number 9. The park is extremely clean, not much dust and almost no trash, just natural landscapes and plenty of wildlife. Most of the rocks in the park belong to various types of Monza granite, an igneous intrusion formed deep underground approximately 75 to 200 million years ago. It was later uplifted by tectonic movements and surfaced after everything above was eroded away. Granite in general has higher levels of natural radiation. Here we have thick layers stripped clean from the protective coat of the sedimentary deposits. The rocks are massive and that has probably a combining effect. Step away from the granite boulders, and the radioactivity drops significantly. I also suspect that granite rocks emit radioactive gas, radon, formed during decay of radioactive elements such as uranium, radium, and thorium. These layers of hard, often rectangular rocks are within the homogeneous matrix are called dikes. You will see a few distinct examples on this trail. Dikes were formed when molted rock got into the cracks in the overlaying solid rock. These particular rocks are called white tank granite, and according to interpretive signs on the trail, they are 150 million years old. Here is the arch itself. To me, it looks like a baby elephant. We kind of got lost on the way back. Perhaps we should have gotten back to the loop, but we were looking for the trail after we passed under the arch. That was probably our mistake. The nature is pristine at this park, and it's sometimes hard to follow the trail when the ground is covered with granite gravel. Well, a bit more adventurous does not hurt, right? That's if you eventually find your way to the car, of course. The climbing is easy here. Just watch your step and carry a whistle if you hike alone to have a way of sending a signal when you get lost or injured. Remember, the mount distress signals are based on groups of three, three blows and paws, and it's six if you are in Europe, by the way. We kept our Geiger counter running and were listening for clicks every time a particle hit the detector. To be fair, the reading of the instrument were within a range of natural or background level of radiation, but Here's the catch. Natural does not automatically mean safe. Let's put it into perspective by making a comparison. Average worldwide annual exposure dose is 2.4 millisievert, which corresponds to 0.27 microsievert per hour, or 27 microrontgen per hour. Our instrument showed 33 microrontgen per hour, which is 22% above average exposure worldwide meaning that you would only have 22% higher chances of getting adverse effects if you were to be exposed the whole year round. But in the place we live, 
the readings are usually two or three times lower than those in Joshua Tree National Park. So technically, we have to tolerate the two to three fold increase in the risk. Radiation effects depend on culminative dose, meaning that the contribution from hot rocks will be diluted and a few days at higher level may have a negligent effect on the annual dose. Another comparison. The levels of radiation on the flight from New York to London is 5 microsievert per hour, or 15 times higher than in Joshua Tree. Please note that we are not making any conclusions. It's just one report. More detailed studies with carefully calibrated instruments would provide more reliable information. Still, an important thing to remember is that the further you get away from the boulders, the lower the radiation levels are. In fact, the levels at the motel we stayed were much lower. In summary, enjoy the landscapes and avoid sleeping on the rocks. Here's the sad truth about radiation and its mutagenic effects. I'm not talking about massive exposures that kill cells directly, only about tiny nicks in DNA resulting in cell multiplication gone out of control. The amount of mutations depends on the total number of events, essentially the dose. It does not really matter if one person gets the entire dose or 10,000 people get 10,000 fold smaller doses each. The number of hits DNA mutations will be the same. And this means that no matter how small the level, the risk is always there. Now to recap, the rocks in Joshua Tree National Park are cool but also hot, and not just temperature hot. Also, the owners of granite top counters don't necessarily have to worry now. Just be aware and keep in mind that the material for countertops comes from different places. Yours may be just fine, or maybe not. Anyway, the practical strategy would be the same as for buildings from concrete. Good ventilation to remove the radioactive gas radon. Okay, I think we are done with the physics biology part, and I'm not going to bore you with the radioactive business anymore. However, we will continue to take our Geyer counter on the trails. Oh, I almost forgot. If you get the spot and stay in the camp, you will be rewarded with an amazing display of stars, thanks to dry air and the distance from the cities. Thanks for watching, and please stay safe on your trips. See ya!